Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is the second video on the topic matrices and in this video we look at some operations between matrices which help us get new matrices. So before that uh, we'll just talk a little bit about terminology. We saw the last time that matrices which have only one row or one column are sometimes referred to as vectors and then we saw something called a scalar matrix which was like a number. So let's just get the terminology straight for a second. We are not really talking about vectors and scalars here. Vectors and scalars have a very specific definition when you go to 11th class physics which is something which has a magnitude and a direction but they have a very abstract definition in complex mathematics so we won't even go into that what we really mean by vectors here the terminology we'll use is numbers we'll sometimes refer to them as scalars and row and column vectors We'll refer to them as vectors and all other matrices will be referred to as matrices itself or and why you'll see in the next video sometimes we'll refer to them as transformations. So the title of this video is addition and scalar multiplication. So scalar multiplication will mean multiplication of matrix by a single number. Okay, so before getting into addition and scalar multiplication, we need to define what we mean when we say two matrices are equal or equality of matrices. So two matrices, let's say one is an M cross N matrix and the other is an, is an A cross B matrix, then they can be equal if and only if M is equal to A and N is equal to B. So two matrices having different numbers of rows and columns can never ever be equal. If they have the same number of rows and columns, then how do you know if they are equal? A i j, let's call this something else, let's call this C cross D because A will become confusing. So M is equal to C, N is equal to D. And let's say this has elements a i j, this has b i j. So a i j has to be equal to b i j for all i between 1 and m or c and j being between 1 and n or d. This all is just a fancy way of saying that if there are two matrices a, b, c, d, e, f, and these are not square matrices by the way g h i j k l then they can only be equal first of all they have they can be equal because they both have two rows and three columns right if there was in um, three more letters here then they could never be equal because one is a three cross three matrix the other is a two cross three matrix but both these matrices have th two rows and three columns so they can be equal and they'll be equal if a is equal to g B is equal to H, C is equal to I, D is equal to J, E is equal to K, F is equal to L. In other words, every corresponding entry must be equal. And in a way, this is a better definition because every corresponding entry being equal sort of means that the number of entries have to be the same. If you had one matrix 1, 2, 3, 4 and the other matrix was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they could not be equal because even though the entries in the first and second rows are the same for both of them, there are two entries in the third row of the second matrix which do not even have a corresponding entry in the second in the first matrix. Right. So these two can never be equal. So two matrices are equal first of all if they have the same number of rows and columns and then if every corresponding entry is equal. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1, x, 3, 4 are equal then we can easily say that x has to be equal to 2. Right. So now that we've seen when two matrices can be equal, let's go on to addition of matrices. Now addition just like equality has a constraint, both the matrices have to have the same size. Size means number of rows and number of columns. So you cannot add a 2 cross 3 matrix to a 2 cross 4 matrix. 
this doesn't make sense. You have to have a 2 cross 3 matrix added to another 2 cross 3 matrix. And once you've done that, how do you add it? You simply add the corresponding entries. So if you have a matrix A, which is 1, 2, 3, 7, 9, 1, and B, which is 2, 2, 4, 6, 4, 2, then A plus B will simply be, now see, these are again 2 cross 3 matrices, 2 rows, 3 columns. So the sum will be a 2 cross 3 matrix with Cij equal to Aij plus Bij, right, for i between 1 and m and for j being between 1 and n. Right. So now you just add the individual terms. 1 plus 2 will be 3, 2 plus 2 will be 4, 3 plus 4 will be 7, 7 plus 6 will be 13, 9 plus 4 will be 13 and 1 plus 2 will be 3. Right. Now if there was another entry here, 2, 5, 1, then addition between these two matrices would not be defined because we would be adding a 2 cross 3 matrix with a 3 cross 3 matrix and that just cannot be done. So addition is quite simple and quite intuitive, you just add the corresponding entries. Now in the beginning um, of the previous video when I was trying to introduce matrices to you, I showed you an example of let's say if you have three factories, 1, 2 and 3 and they make shoes and socks and let's say you have a matrix A telling them how many shoes and socks each factory makes. 2, 4, 1, 5, 6, 7. These are shoes and these are socks. Now what you could do is if you had 12 such matrices telling you the amount of shoes and socks created in each factory in January, February, March, one for each month, you could simply add all those 12 matrices and that would tell you the total number of shoes and socks created in the factory 1, 2 or 3 during the whole year. And how would you add those 12 matrices? All those 12 matrices would be 2 cross 3 matrices and you would add the corresponding entries and you would simply get the total number of things created by each factory. Right. So this is addition of 2 matrices. Now let's move on to scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication just means multiplication by a number. So we could multiply a matrix by 5 for example. And then the answer simply is multiply corresponding entries. Or rather multiply each entry. So if A is a matrix 1, 3, 7, 2, 5, 1, 3, 4, 9, then 2A would simply be a matrix 2, 6, 14, 4, 10, 2, 6, 8, 18. So you multiplying the matrix by 2, which means you multiply each entry of the matrix by 2. Right. So if you have a matrix A with entries A, I, J and you multiply it by a scalar C, then you'll have the new entries B, I, J simply being C times A, I, J. And I'm not going to write the uh, ranges of i and j from now on a is between 1 and m and j i is between 1 and m and j is between 1 and n right so scalar multiplication is also easy enough you just multiply the corresponding entry now what would minus a be in this case minus a would simply be every entry multiplied by minus 1 so it'll be minus 1 minus 3 minus 7 minus 2 minus 5 minus 1 minus 3 minus 4 minus 9 and now that we know minus a, we can get another operation which is which we get by combining addition and scalar multiplication, which is the difference of two vectors uh, of two matrices, which is let's say the matrix A minus matrix B. So A minus B is nothing but A plus minus B. So you just multiply the entries of B by minus 1 and add it to A. Or you can just say more simply, you can subtract each entry of B from the corresponding entry of A. From that you would get a matrix. And again, A minus B is only defined if A and B both have the same size. Right, that is the same uh, number of rows and the same number of columns. 
Now we'll look at a few properties of addition and scalar multiplication and I'm not going to prove these properties because the proof is easy enough. You just go back to each of the entry and prove it. I'll do it for the first one but I would like to suggest that you try to prove all of these properties at home. So first we'll do some properties of addition of two matrices and the first property is known as the commutative property. And it just means that A plus B is equal to B plus A. And you can see that quite easily if you take each term of A to be Aij and B to be Bij, then their sum would be Cij or capital C whose entries would be Cij such that Cij is equal to Aij plus Bij. But now these are numbers, now these are not matrices, right? Cij is a number for each value of i and j. This is obviously equal to Bij plus Aij because addition of numbers is commutative which is equal to B plus A. Right? So these properties are easy enough to prove but, prove but I would suggest that you try it. A plus B equals B plus A that is called the commutative property. Then you have the associative property which says that A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. Now again if you try to prove it it's easy enough because this relation follows for numbers and when you try to prove it it boils down to the addition of three numbers but I would like you to be wary of that proof always because some other times you'll see a relation between matrices and you'll think well this is true for numbers therefore this must be true for matrices which is not always correct. Right? Only in the case when this implies the addition of individual entries will we see that actually a plus b plus c has to be equal to if you add these two first right so just because it's true for numbers doesn't mean it's true for matrices we encounter discrepancies like that in the next video so you should always try to prove it from scratch then you have the idea these are related to numbers by the way this is how addition is decided for numbers and we just extrapolated that to matrices then you have the idea of the existence of an identity Now an identity, now this is not an identity matrix, now I'm talking about identity as an abstract concept. Identity, an identity is associated with every operation and that identity leaves the number unchanged or the matrix unchanged when you apply the operation. So identity in an addition would mean something that you add to a matrix that doesn't change the matrix and that is the zero matrix. A zero matrix simply is a matrix which has every entry zero. In this case it's a two cross two matrix but it's a general concept. So every structure, every size m cross n has associated with it a zero matrix such that a plus zero is equal to zero plus a is equal to a. Now this is true for numbers therefore it's true for matrices. That doesn't always hold but in this case it does hold. So you have the existence of an identity when it comes to addition of matrices. You have a zero matrix that you can add to any matrix without changing it at all. Then related to the identity, you have the existence of an added inverse. And an additive inverse would be a matrix that you add to the original matrix to get the identity, right, or zero. And this is of course minus A because for any matrix A you can add A to minus A and you can get the zero matrix. And for every matrix A, minus A exists. Just to tell you what identity and inverse are in general, for addition the identity is zero and the inverse is minus A for whatever A the number is. For multiplication for numbers the identity is 1 and the inverse is 1 by A. Right. So you multiply anything by 1 you get the same number. You multiply a number by its 1 by that thing and you get the multiplicative inverse. These are for numbers. These concepts have been extended to uh, vectors and to matrices. Right. So this, this is related to addition by the way. We haven't done the multiplication of one matrix with another matrix. That will be the subject for the next topic, uh, for the next video. And that's when you'll start to see discrepancies between properties that would hold for numbers and properties that would hold for matrices.
So you have the existence of an identity or a zero matrix which follows this property for any matrix A and for any matrix A you have the existence of an additive inverse minus A such that those two when added give zero. Now let's look at a couple of properties of scalar multiplication. If you have, by the way, I'll denote matrices or vectors by capital letters and scalars or numbers by small letters. So if you have k times a plus b, where k is a scalar, let's say 5 or 7, then this is equal to k times a plus k times b. It will reduce to the same relation between entries, so I suggest you try to prove it at home. And then if you have just two scalars, k plus l times a, that is equal to k times a plus l times a. So these are the two relations for scalar multiplication. So what have we seen up till now? We've seen that matrices are a collection of numbers and those collections of numbers can be given a symbol, let's say capital A, which holds all the information. Then we've seen special types like row matrices or vectors, column matrices or vectors, square matrices, diagonal matrices, scalar and identity matrices. And we saw a new type of matrix in this video, the zero matrix. We've seen when two matrices are equal. We've seen how to add two matrices and how to multiply a matrix by a number. The next step is to understand how you to multiply a matrix by another matrix. And that is the topic matrix multiplication. And we'll do that in the next video because it's a little bit more complicated. Thank you.